So some of the events of the last couple episodes of The Expanse have led me to believe that railguns will play a pretty significant role in what's to come for the show. So I figured today we could take a closer look at exactly how railguns work within The Expanse and a little bit of how they're utilized. I'm Colin and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. Now, before I begin, I'm going to throw out a light spoiler warning. Although this isn't directly referring to the events of the last couple episodes of the show, there may be some spoilers here and there for some of the things that we've seen recently in the last few episodes of Season 6 of The Expanse. So if you haven't seen those episodes yet, I recommend clicking off this video now. I'll leave a link up here to something spoiler-free. So within the universe of The Expanse, the railgun actually plays a fairly significant role. It's one of three major ship-to-ship -ship weapons utilized in space combat, and seems to fill a lot of other roles throughout the military conflicts within The Expanse. So today we're going to jump in and discuss very briefly how these railguns work, and then talk about how they're actually utilized within the show. So let's start with how they work. Now, before I begin, I'm not an expert on railguns. I know there's actual technology behind this, so I'm just going to give some of the basics. Long story short, a railgun is a projectile weapon that uses electromagnetic forces to accelerate a projectile up to incredible speeds. This allows them to attack near instantaneously at vast ranges, making their attacks relatively hard to dodge within a certain distance. And by the way, generally that effective engagement range is considered to be about a thousand kilometers. While these projectiles are unsteered, any target within a thousand kilometers that they are fired at would basically be hit instantaneously, making the shot undodgeable. However, when you operate outside of that 1,000 kilometers, a relatively quick computer could track that shot and move the ship out of the way in time. Even further, and it could be done by a human within human response times. On top of that, because railguns fire so specifically and so instantaneously, within that range they can be used to disable specific systems on ships. We see this utilized by the UN on at least one occasion to disable the drive systems of a ship they intend to board, which seems to be a remarkably good use for this weapon. However, outside of that range, we do see railguns occasionally used. For example, during one of the battles in the last couple episodes, we see the Rosinante and the Pella come up against each other, where the Rosinante is actually utilizing its railgun beyond that 1,000 kilometer range. Now, let's talk a little bit about how they're deployed, because we see railguns deployed in a few very specific roles. First off, there's the obvious, the ship-mounted railguns on larger warships. These work a lot like the turreted battleship guns we saw on ships during the First and Second World War. They could generally pivot to hit targets that are off-axis and do incredible amounts of damage. We see these on board most ships utilized by the UN, and on some of the larger ships utilized by the MCRN, ships like the Donager and the Scirocco class both of which have turreted railguns that are some of the most powerful in the system. Then there's sort of hard-mounted railguns that we see on some smaller ships. Notably, these are on the Amun-Ra class stealth ships that we see during the sort of early days in Season 1 of The Expanse. And one was later added to the Rosinante in one of its many, many refits. These railguns require the entire ship to be angled in a particular way because the railgun doesn't rotate independently of the vessel. It is instead hard-mounted to the ship, so could only fire forward, meaning the ship itself has to aim at the target. Another way we've seen the railguns utilized is in stationary defense, and this mostly comes down to planetary defense against asteroids. We see that Earth's planetary defense network, specifically designed to engage asteroids that pose a risk to the planet, is built almost entirely out of orbital railgun platforms that are likely unmanned. But thanks to last week's episode of The Expanse, which was Season 6, Episode 5, we are now seeing a new way that these railguns can be deployed. We see the Free Navy use basically a railgun network within the ring gates. This allows them to basically control who uses that space. While we are not entirely certain of the diameter of the space within the ring gates, I think it's reasonable to assume that it's within a thousand kilometers. Anyone who wants to get through the ring space now has to go past Marco's railguns, which pose a very significant threat to any ship within their range, which, like I said, is likely the entirety of ring space. Beating railguns, especially within the thousand kilometer range, is a trickier ordeal. It requires some very fancy flying, or for the railguns themselves to be disabled in advance, either by torpedoes or by infiltration strikes. I couldn't begin to guess exactly what the UN, the MCRN, and now sort of the rebel factions within the Free Navy are going to do. However, I would assume that there's a pretty decent chance that 
they're going to use one of these tactics to disable Marco's railguns, but we'll see next week. This is likely the last trick Marco has up his sleeve to try to win this war, which, by the way, hasn't been going very well for the Free Navy in the last couple episodes. If you want to learn about the collapse of the Free Navy and how I think the Free Navy is really going to end up falling, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know, if you haven't read the books yet, how you think they're actually going to bring down Marco's railguns. Do you think they're going to infiltrate the facilities and take them down from the inside, or carry out a long-range torpedo strike, or something more elaborate? Leave it down below in the comments. And if you have anything else you want to see me cover in The Expanse, you could also leave that down in the comments as well. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time. <laughs>